It's the spirit of prophecy that means what he did for us. Welcome to Lakeside Church. Let's stand to our feet as we begin to worship. You may be seated. Well, good morning, everybody. As Kevin said, welcome to Lakeside Church. Thank you so much for joining us for worship today. 
a few quick announcements. Um, if you're visiting with us today, if you're a first-time guest, uh, we'd love to be able to get a little bit of information and just be able to say thank you for joining us today. And so we have several ways that you can fill out our visitor information card. Uh, one of them is if you scan the, the screen on either side of the room with your phone, that QR code will take you to the online uh, form. Also in the back of the chairs, uh, there are little cards that you can scan the QR code on these as well, and they'll take you to the visitor form. And if you have any trouble with that or if you'd like to fill out uh, a hard copy of that form, you can stop by our connection desk out in the lobby, and the folks out there at the connection desk would love to be able to help you with that. And if you do fill out one of those forms today, stop by the connection desk, tell those guys you filled out a form. We'd love to give you a little gift just saying thank you so much for joining us at Lakeside Church. Also, if you're stopping by out there today, there are lots of things going on with VBS, our Lakeside Serve Day coming up, um, lots of sign-ups and things to see out there in the lobby. If you see Pastor Jay Reber today, uh, be sure to tell him happy birthday. Today is Pastor Jay's birthday. He's probably running around helping uh, everything run smooth this morning, uh, but it is Pastor Jay's birthday, so if you see him, uh, just be sure to tell him that. If you came to church this morning and you're looking to give your tithes or offering, we have three main ways you can do that. The first is with an envelope in the seat back in front of you, dropping it off in the basket beside either door. The second is online at lakesidechurch.ws, and the third is setting up our text to give option. We don't care how you give here at Lakeside. We just want to say thank you so much for your generosity each and every week. Um, at the start of every month, we've been focusing on Operation uh, Christmas Child, our shoebox ministry, and the things that we are collecting each month as we push towards our goal of 500 shoeboxes packed and sent out this year. So for the month of May, uh, we're collecting washcloths and the $9 shipping donations that go with each and every box. Uh, so with our goal of 500 boxes, that's about $4,500 um, in shipping costs to get those boxes sent all over the world. So if you would like to contribute to that um, and you want to contribute to the shipping costs, just be sure to denote OCC or Shoebox Ministry on your gift today. Um, and then one announcement from those folks is that please, uh, we thank you for your giving. Uh, you've, you've given each and every month to the need for the Shoebox Ministry, but please do not give any food or any liquids um, because we can't send those. So if you send anything that's liquid, it could spill in the box and mess those up and the food would probably perish before it was able to get to the children because from right now it could be eight, nine months before that box is actually in the hands of a child. Um, so no food, no liquids as we get ready to send those and we continue to collect, collect those items. But thank you so much for continuing to give to that ministry. And this time we're gonna pray over our service and our tithes and offerings and we'll continue to worship together. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity to gather here at Lakeside and worship your name. Lord, we thank you for the ministry of OCC. And we pray for the children now who will receive the shoeboxes that we are collecting all over the world. We pray for the gospel message that would go with those. And we pray that because of what is collected here each and every month for the next few months, lives will be changed and eternity will be impacted. And so, Lord, we just thank you for that. We pray over the tithes and offerings that are collected today, and we just pray as a church we continue to use them to further your gospel message to the ends of the earth. We pray over the worship team as they continue to lead us and Pastor Kevin as he brings the message. Be with us today. Open our hearts, open our minds, and allow us to hear from you. It's your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand as we continue to worship this morning. Let your glory fill this place. We're alive in your 
consuming fire fall fall on us that is the refiner fire of God's will in our lives when we can say God I don't want for my life just what I want I want what you want for my life and I want you to help guide and direct my steps when Christ comes into our heart and begins to change us a little we begin to lean into his will it says that as we grow closer in our relationship that his will and our will start to become one and the same and for that we can be thankful we can be thankful for growth we can be thankful for provision in our lives and last week we we sang a song called gratitude and today I want to I want to sing that song again and I want us to lift our voices of of God blessing us in our lives and continuing to sustain us through this life today. All my words for sure I've got nothing new How could I express All my gratitude I could sing these songs As I often do But every song must end and you never do so i'll throw my hands praise you again and again so that i have is a hallelujah hallelujah and i know it's not much but i've nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got one response. I've got just one move with my arms stretched wide. hallelujah to him today shout it out you got it in you today so come on my soul don't you get shy on me lift up your song cause you've got a lion inside of your lungs get up and praise the Lord so come on my soul
know its number, but I'm nothing else fit for a king, except for a heart singing hallelujah. Sing this old hymn with us this evening. Thank you for being a friend and we thank you for being a father. God, we thank you for providing a way through Jesus Christ to come and redeem us from ourselves. God, and help us to live in your will. God, forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings and God, help us to know that you want to hear from us today. As a father does to a child, God, pray that each person here would know that they are a child of God and that you want to hear from them and that you love them. God, we love you and are thankful today for being our Father and being our friend. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. That was so good. I, you know, sometimes I try and sound like Kevin, <sighs> you know, like hit those notes. Kathy over here. Y'all, we really are so fortunate to have these guys up here. You know, one of the coolest things about all this. Yeah, absolutely. 
One of, the, one of the coolest things about this is I think if you were to sit back and look at their hearts, you know, in the middle of this, it's not about them. I mean, they've been given these gifts and talents, but it's not about them. It's about Christ. It's a hope that you guys can see Christ in them using these gifts uh, to bring praise and worship to Him. Uh, today, man, we are in a, in a series called Dear God, and uh, man, we started this series because I was sitting back and I was meeting with, uh, with another believer uh, who'd been following Jesus for quite some time, and he asked me a simple question, how do I pray? How do I pray? And, and, and as, as I heard that, I just kept thinking to myself, all right, Kevin, maybe you've got some work to do, right? Like, maybe this is something we need to sit back and talk over because, you know, a lot of us, that wasn't always displayed. I, I remember uh, kind of becoming a Christian, and I would, I would watch the pastor. I remember sometimes sitting back, the pastor wouldn't even give us a heads up when we were praying. He'd just bust out in prayer, and I'd be like, y'all know I don't know if you've ever been in there, but, but that's the truth. Like sometimes we, there's, there's these coachable moments and what better place than to do it here. And, and through this series, we've been walking, we're going to walk through the Lord's prayer. And the, and the whole concept is, listen, Jesus gave us a format on how to pray. Not every, not every prayer sounds like this. The, the truth of the matter is God wants to know you personally. Right? And so he wants us to come to him personally as well. And again, we can use these prayers. These prayers are good as well. But, but the truth is, he wants to hear you. And they all sound different. I, I love doing statistics, especially when we're, we're kind of starting still new in the series. There's a statistic out of 2014 Pew Research Center. It says this, For many Americans, every day is a day of prayer. More than half, 55% of Americans say they pray every day, uh, while 21% they pray weekly, 23% say seldom uh, they ever pray. I, I was sitting back and I was thinking to myself, I'm, I'm sure that these numbers may be a little skewed now. You know, here we are, 2022. It probably looks... A little different. I found another survey, uh, not a Christian survey. This was this was just uh, I, I forget which one, but it was more so definitely one that was a little worldly. And they were studying prayer. Here's what they came up with: In 2011, a study found prayer can help reduce anger and aggression. In a series of experiments in which participants either prayed for or thought about a stranger. Uh, a person who angered them or a friend in need, members of the prayer group were often likely to feel less anger and aggression after provocation. And I, another study found this. And th man, I, I thought this was really cool. Did you know that uh, as, as you dig into some things, yeah, you think about the link of prayer and marriage? I, I, I mean, I, honestly, I can give you guys a foolproof way to make sure you have a strong marriage. And this isn't even a marriage series. We're not even doing that. Listen, this, I'm going to just say, look, this might make some people uncomfortable, okay? Listen, how about this? Less than 1% of married couples that prayed together daily ended up in divorce. Whew, right? Can I give you another hint? Or, or, or another thing that, that's kind of tough? Christians, only 11% of us are apparently getting together with our spouse and praying daily over each other. Oh, right? Like, and, and here's this. I can already see it. Like in the middle of this, you know, when, I, when I'm on stage, sometimes I get to see things that other people aren't seeing. And so like, I just saw a couple spouses go, right? Just do that. Listen, husbands, wives that just came in here, I am so sorry, right? But here's the deal, man. I want you to know this. Prayer has an impact on you personally. It has an impact on your family. And so, man, I, I want to make sure I, I, I share that with you guys. Here's a couple other things uh, as, as we sit back and we, we go through it. I started thinking of famous prayers. Uh, Psalm 139.23 comes from this guy named David. He, he started out as a shepherd. Apparently, as he was a shepherd, he was killing lions and all kind of crazy stuff. Later on, grows up. Kills a giant man, right? This is this really, look, I'm telling you, it's kind of crazy. In the middle of this, this warrior dude, right, also wrote like some really sweet poems and, uh, and also like these heartfelt prayers you kind of see from it. You know what? There, there's one that always comes back to, man, I, I had to memorize this uh, at one point in time, but it was all of Psalm 139. 
And if you haven't read all of Psalm 139, I encourage you, it closes out the prayer like this. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there is any grievous way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. You know what he's doing? He's going before God and he's asking him, I want you to dig in there. I want you to see what's in here because look, there's things, I have some blind spots. God, I need you to pull them out and I need you to show them to me. How about this? He also writes this, Psalm 23. A lot of us, we've read Psalm 23, maybe at a funeral or someplace like that. Uh, my 1990s kids, you guys are going to remember this from a guy named Coolio, right? Maybe, all right. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But don't keep going though, it stops there, right? <laughs> it stops right there. Here, here's what it says. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Coolio doesn't say that part. No. No, listen, man. We have a place. We have a place in the Lord's Prayer where Jesus, he kind of, he, he's on what we call this teaching. He's on, he, it's called Sermon of the Mount. And he gives all these just incredible teachings and then on it, there's this place where he digs into prayer. And he, he actually confronts two types of people. He confronts a really religious person, right? And he confronts a really spiritual person, right? And in it, he goes into this and he says, and this then is how you should pray. And he gives us a format of a way to pray. And that's where we're going to put a focus on. Now, our sermon and sentence is this. Prayer takes our hearts from this world and shifts my eyes on the Lord. Is that, if that makes sense to you guys, because here's the deal. We lived in this world for a long time now. Sometimes we look kind of worldly, right? Why, what's one of the reasons we go to the Lord in prayer? We go to the Lord in prayer because here's the deal. Sometimes I get so fixated on the world, I start looking like the world. And when I start looking like the world, God says, hold on, time out. I, you, this is not it, buddy. Like you're kind of missing it. Uh, and, and so here's, here's where you can kind of see that. Yeah, God is holy, and therefore, because He's holy, we are made in His image. Guess what? He has made you holy, those that have, uh, that have decided to follow Jesus. Do, do you know what holy means? Again, sometimes well, we didn't grow up in church, so I like to break things down. Holy means set apart. Right, break that down a little bit more. Set apart from this world. So here's the deal. What he's calling us to is even though we've lived in this world, even though it's so easy for me to put my eyes and focus on things in this world, one of the ways that I can stay fixated on the heart of Jesus is to go to him in prayer, right? And so when we sit back and we think about that, prayer takes our heart from this world and it shifts my eyes on the Lord. When we have a prayer life, listen, it shows up in every area. I, I used to have this buddy named David when I was in sixth grade. Uh, listen, David, I started discovering that sixth grade is kind of where a lot of our friendships started changing. David started having a potty mouth. Guess who else ended up getting one, right? It's a long time ago, right? Forgive me, right? I'm still a work in progress. Here, here's what else we discovered. David started, he would spit on the sidewalk, right? I know this is kind of nasty. I'm giving, I, this is what I do, so forgive me, right? Here's what, here's what I discovered. I wanted to look so much like David, I picked up a goofy habit like that on the sidewalk, right? And, and I, I go back and I think like this. I wanted to walk, talk, act like David. Because why? Because I spent time with David. I hope this is making sense because when you spend time with, with people or time around things, guess what? Oftentimes you tend to pick up their image. And so why do we need to go to the Lord in prayer? We need to go to Him because we spend time with Him. We find Him changing and transforming us. Their early African converts to Christianity were earnest and regular in private devotions. There's a story about this. Each one reportedly had a separate spot in a thicket where he would pour his heart before the Lord. Over time, this past began to be well-worn. Uh, and it wasn't long, right? As a result, if one of those believers began to neglect prayer, it would soon be apparent to the others. And they would kindly remind the negligent uh, person who had stopped praying, brother, the grass grows on your path. You know, and the truth is, listen, a, a lack of time with the Lord, it doesn't just show there, it shows up in the rest of our lives as well. 
There's something that happens when we decide that, that we are going to be meeting with God. Yeah, I, listen, Jesus, I told you Jesus ends up making a scene. He teaches about two types of people, a really religious guy. These would have been Pharisees or Sadducees. And, and so he calls these guys out. And one of the things that we can kind of question as he calls them out is this. When I go and I start praying, am I here to make a scene? Am I here to be seen by men? And am I, or am I wanting to be seen by God? Do I live a life as one that's the same all the way out in front of the others as I do when the doors are closed at, at the house? I, and, and that's not just a prayer life thing. Yeah, does that make sense? Because here, here's what I've discovered sometimes. Yeah, man, we can come and be Sunday morning people and we get our button-up shirts on and we have our really nice blue jeans on and we have our hair fixed up really good, right? And we talk really good in front of, in front of our people, right? In front of certain people. But then the doors close and we go home and we kind of transform into somebody else. And Jesus is about to confront that, but he's also going to confront it in a way of prayer. L listen to what he says in Matthew 6. If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew 6. We're going to start at verse 5. If not, we have it on the screen. Just read along with us. It says this, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. Look, I mean, I mean can you imagine this? Jesus is going right for the heart of these folks, right? Do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. He says, I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close your door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Listen, does this mean that, hey, there's not a place to pray out loud in front of people? No, that's not it. But what's he getting to the heart of? He's, he's coming after these religious folks that continue to look down on others. They want to look really good. They want to prop themselves up in front of others. But then maybe privately their lives are a bit of a disaster. Their relationship with the Lord isn't what it's supposed to be. It's, it's let, look at me. Watch, watch how well I'm doing. Listen, that's, do, you, do you know what that is? Uh, that, that's called religion, right? Religion is what Jesus is getting to the heart of in this passage. Religion is making sure we look good instead of God changing me for his good. Religion says put the focus on me. Religion says look at my really good behavior. Religion says look at my big words. And instead of closing the door behind you and connecting with the Lord, you just want to make sure everybody else hears you. Man, but listen, something happens when Christ enters our life and puts a focus on, uh, on God. Listen, what changes my behavior because God is holy and therefore it begins to make me holy, to set me apart in church. Again, man, we, have, we call this sanctification. It's like a church word, right? Where God's transforming us. He's taking us from what? From being worldly people, people of this world, and transforming us to look more like Him. And what's one of the ways He does it? He does it through prayer. And so He's, he's telling these guys, hey, listen, break this up. Man, I, 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 I do want to make sure I say this. Friends, if you still look... If you still look just like the world the day that you became a Christian, I want to challenge you. Maybe your prayer is simply this prayer. Search me, O oh God. Search my heart. See if there's any wicked way in me and pull this out of me. Help me acknowledge that. Uh, listen, our, our lives here on earth, it's not necessarily here to impress people. Uh, it, it, God wants us to live lives to imitate and honor him. I don't know if you've noticed this. I, if you grew up in a church where it was all about being religious, you know what I found? I found people more broken afterwards. I find people that are really tired afterwards. I find a lot of people thinking that that's who Jesus is, not this, not this king who came to free us from sins and burdens. That, that's not who people see in religion. No. You know what? They see a really good pastor that talks a really good game often. I'm, I'm going to let you guys know, listen, I have my struggles. Please don't look to me. We got to look to Jesus. All of us. We're walking this out together, folks. 
And in this, look, there's times where we all have to sit back, connect to the Lord, know how to get there. So did you notice how Jesus says, how do we break up religion? Here's what he says. Really simple. Go to a private place and connect with God. Close your door. Find time with just him and you. What does that do? Listen, he fuels us. It brings us humility. It takes a spotlight off of us and it puts it on him. Listen, you meet him away from all the distractions. Anybody else got distractions in their life? I, I, I don't think there's ever been a time where there's been more distractions in this world. What better time to sit back, to close the door, and to put, I, I, I mean, if you are a knee-praying person, if you are a, a time to just bow your head, a time to close your eyes, maybe that's you and your truck that's jacked up on the road, and you and the Lord are just having some time together, right? And you're praying, and you're spilling your heart out before Him. How about this? It's bringing, I, I, I go back and I think about this. He's talking to the religious folks, but then he's also talking to the folks that are kind of spiritual. I, and and I, you think like this, being spiritual is not being spirit-led. Being spiritual is not being spirit-led. Listen to what he says it in, the way he says it in verse 7 and 8. And when you pray, do not keep babbling like pagans. For they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. You know, I go back and I think about this. There were spiritual people in the Bible well before this time. If you go back and you look at Elijah's time, you guys remember Elijah's really having this battle against folks that are believing in Baal, who is this false god. And in it, there's finally this showdown. We're going to see who the real God is. I don't know if you guys remember this story, but there comes this place where, where uh, Elijah's just like, you know what? If your God's real, just tell them. Show up, right? And these guys, man, they are like praying all day long. It says, I think it's uh, 1 Kings 18. I may be a little off on that, all right. uh, but, but what it says, they're praying all day long, and before long, uh, this, this false god is not showing up, so it says they start, they start cutting themselves, they start doing all of these things, and then all of a sudden, Elijah speaks, and God shows up, and things begin to change, and I, I go back, and I think about this. I, 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 I want to say this so, I, 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 sometimes you want to say things so elegantly, and it just doesn't always come off. You know, I, I think about this. A lot of us, we, we live for this idea to be spiritual, that this will just make me good. It, what if I tell you that God's not necessarily all in it for your behavior modification? What if, what if we just say that? I, I mean, listen, you think about this idea of, of, of spiritual. How many times have you heard things like, well, that's karma, right? It, you do good, good things happen. You do bad bad things happen, right? Hey, but here's, here's what Jesus wants to get the heart to and, and really why prayer is so important. Why is it important? Because what it's going to do is this. It's going to separate us from putting our hope in the things and faults God and the other things. It's going to remove the distractions in our life and it brings us to connect with Jesus that breathes life into us. That allows us to move forward and instead of sitting back and feeling beaten over and over every time you make a mistake. Friends, I need you to hear this. I don't know how you came in here today, but I want you to know this. And it doesn't mean that we're supposed to go out and just sin like crazy. That's not what I'm saying. But I want you to hear this. If you're carrying the burden of being spiritual or super religious, and you know what? You've tripped up along the way, and you keep making mistakes, and you feel like God's out to smite you, let me tell you this. That is not the story of the cross. He came to free you, friends. Please go back and read the gospel along with me. If you would like somebody to walk through some scripture with you, I would be happy to. I want you to know he called us to live in freedom. But I also want to make sure, because I don't want to go so far here that you guys are like, listen, fruit is eventually what shows up. Because God shows up into your life, he begins to transform us. And because he transforms us, listen, we start dying to self. 
And what does that look like? I start I stop living for the desires of my heart and I start living for his. And so because of that, guess what? Some of our behaviors are going to change along the way. And I, I hope that makes sense. I, I, I'm, all right, I'm going to keep going because if not, boy, we're going to be in for a mess of it, right? I, I, I go back and I, I say this. Praying reminds us to put God at the center. Simple. It reminds us to put God at the center of things. I, not so much on me. Listen, so this is how Jesus says. He addresses those two types of people. And if you're following along with us, verse 9, listen to how he opens this up. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Yeah, I mean, again, we've said this prayer probably many times. Do you know where he starts with this? Yeah, Jesus starts with adoration. He starts with adoration of who God is. Hey, listen, how do I pray? Can I just, like, if we are taking step one today, and like you've never prayed or you've never been much of a prayer, step one is this. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for all that you've given me. I, I mean, that's, it can be as simple as that. Thank you, God, for your son, Jesus. Thank you, God, for giving me this next breath. Thank you, God. And you can fill in the blanks. Listen, God is holy. He's holy. He's beyond this world. He's beyond us. I, I, I shouldn't say that. Let me take that back. He's, look, we can connect with him through prayer. I'm trying to make sure we understand. He is, his name is hallowed. And I, I love this. He addresses God as a father. And I know in a, in a group like this, man, that, that word right there, that can come off in a whole many different directions, right? Depending on how, how your father treated you. But I want you to know this. He's a good father. He's a good father. I, I want to keep going with this. Listen, uh, Jesus gives us this model of prayer to remind us what's important. And, and, and I go back and I think about this. Uh, pray and reminds us to put Jesus or put God at the center. You know why? Because here's the deal. We live in a world where, where maybe we sit back in the day. Back in the day when we look at things, listen, we used to, people used to carve out idols, right? Well, we're still carving out idols. They just look a little different. I, I know this kind of looks... Y'all are like, this does not look like a king's throne. But just know, like, this is all I could come up with this week, right? It's what I have, right? I, you sit back and, and you think about this. And by the way, I, somebody left this. And I thought, this is so cool. Somebody left this in a bag one day and said to, to Kevin. So thank you, by the way, if that was you. Hey, uh, and can we just address, like, as I'm speaking about this, this is carved out, okay? Like, but let's just say this represents Jesus, on the throne, right? Where he deserves to be. And so in our lives, what prayer does, prayer begins to put our focus right here. Jesus, I'm here. I am dying to sin. I am dying to myself. This is what I'm doing. I'm coming to you today. I want to bring adoration to you and take it off of me. And that's what I'm doing with prayer. Do you know why we need that? Because there's so many things in this world that can begin to take this seat up for Jesus. Yeah, I, I've, I've seen a lot of them. Uh, for some of us, for some of us, look, you like to build things. It is your thing. You love seeing something like come from scratch and just building things up. And so you'll spend your whole life and, and, and do this. You'll, you'll start building things and you'll love it. Listen, here's the deal. God's given some of you guys passions. And I want to make sure I don't want to disclaim that God's given you certain passions and gifts. Let's just throw that out there. You do have certain passions and gifts. The problem is sometimes we'll take these passions and gifts and we start doing this. We're just laying right there, right? Like not where they belong, not, not as something that we just enjoy doing. We begin getting obsessed with it, and it's what we think about. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, some of us, look, and, and Satan is so sneaky. He loves to do this. We'll sit back, and all of a sudden, God tells us to move. He tells us to go, but then we get sat, stuck on our couches, and you look at something on social media or Facebook, and then they show a really cute video of a dog, and then you scroll up, and it's another cute video of a dog, and then another one, and all of a sudden, your time has become obsessed with this right here. Here's the deal. That can turn into all types of things. I'm being silly. The truth is, 
This has a lot of power. And, and, and so, if we're not careful, this right here begins to come right here. And then, look, y'all know we got some stuff that we love doing around here, right? By the way, please come back next week, right? Like, <laughs> can we say that? Like, please? All right. How about this? You pick up something like this. And boy, you, would, you, in, you start enjoying. Who would have thought that we would enjoy chasing a little white ball around and at the same time saying words that me and my friend David used to say? <laughs> right? And so you think through this, man. Here's the deal. Like, we'll take things like this and we'll begin to replace. Hey, hey it's a Sunday morning. Like, no big deal. Right? Or we start looking and behaving like Jesus is just... Yeah, he's, just, he's just there. He's just another part of the throne. I've seen people do it with music. Right? Stay there. That's gone. How about, look, if I can just get smart enough. You ever seen anybody use intellect? I mean, boy, they will open up books and they'll start quoting somebody real quick. And, and you know what, man? Like, you just, it'll take another spot there. And then we have this. Somebody told me, look, I'm going to go get, I'm going I'm to get a, a little, what's the small wallets, the clip ones? Uh, anyways, don't, don't get distracted, Kevin. <laughs> we'll take something like this. And y'all, we'll build our whole lives around off any of these. We'll build an entire life off of it. We, we will skip all types of things with kids will neglect our wives will neglect who Jesus is calling us to be to chase after what's in here and guess what before long it becomes a piece of our heart instead of Jesus having all of it and and the reason why this is a big deal what Jesus says or God says early on you guys remember what one of the one of the first things he says in the in the in the 10 commandments do not put any other gods before me. Don't do that. Greatest commandment of all times, even Jesus. This is New Testament. What's he say? Hey, listen, love your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Right? And then love your neighbors as yourself. Can I say this? This type of life does not add up to loving God with all our hearts, all our minds, all our souls. Over time, do you, do you, what, I, what I feel like we start discovering is eventually something starts not adding up. And we chased all these things. You, you, you sit back and you look at it. None of those things will get to go to heaven with us. At the end of life, it's all gone. None, none of these actually breathe life. They're not life givers. Jesus came. He lived. He breathed. I, according to multiple disciples, He was resurrected. They believed it so much that they were willing to die for that. It's crazy to think if that was just a lie. What's wild, if you watch people that follow Jesus, I mean, you'll watch them and their lives begin to transform and they become more like Jesus. So why, why do we sit back and pray? Prayer reminds me to put God at the center of everything. How does he do it? Well, he rearranges my heart to look more like Christ and less like me. And so because we are of this world, we have to come to him daily. And we have to remind ourselves, you know what? Like this right here can be an excellent tool for his kingdom. I, does this mean that we can't have a nice house and have some things and have some fun along the way? No. But you know what? If it means that we're going to chase this over Jesus, then he's going to say we've got to rearrange that. It, 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 is it smart? Look, right there. It goes falling. Look. Is it good to have knowledge? Is it good to read? Is it good to have some structure? Is it good to sit back and have conversations uh, in order to sit back and, and actually help lead people to Christ and help them work through some things? You bet it is. But it can't come before the Lord. If, if golf or fishing or fill in the doggone blank of whatever it is comes before the king, he says you have to lay it down. And then if it's this, man, listen, there might be some of us 
We've got to simply, we got to get home and you got to find a place to lay this down. Because if not, we'll find a way and it doesn't matter if it's this or any of these others. You'll find a time where you'll just put all these things in front of Jesus. And all of a sudden, he just becomes, he becomes an, an, a nice little thing that we celebrate on Sundays or maybe on Easter or Christmas and, and before long, we start questioning, listen, if we're not connecting with him daily, we start even questioning, is he real? I haven't heard from him. He's not talking. He's not, wor- he's not working through things in my life. And, and, and so you think about the rearranging my heart to look more like Christ and less like me. Look what Jesus says in Matthew 6.10. He says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus recognizes that our hearts can be corrupt from time to time, that it's often distracted. So how do we fight back against a corrupt heart right before? I think Jesus is always the best person to go look at with things like this. Right before Jesus goes to the cross, he's in the Garden of Gethsemane trying to pray with his disciples. Disciples keep going to sleep. He knows what's coming. He knows that the cross is coming. He knows he's about to suffer. And do you know, listen, there was a place where he prayed this in Matthew 26. Jesus asked God to let this cup pass if possible. But then comes this incredible passage, not my will, but yours. You know, to sum it up this way, even though this is not my desire, Lord, I choose you. I choose your will. It really begins to fight back against what culture says. Just follow your heart. You do you. Do what makes you happy. Can I, let's, let's really get to the center of this. If Jesus were to live by that logic, the cross would have never happened. Without the cross, you don't have the resurrection. Without the cross, we're not saved people, men. We're not in a life-giving relationship with Jesus. Can I just fight back and push it back against culture for a moment? What if we change the phrase from what makes me happy to God, what is your will for me? Whatever your will over mine is the most important thing in my life. I, uh, let's let's kind of work towards the end. I'm going to go back and, and, and I'm going to just talk about this. Oh, when we do that, what we're saying is, Lord, I'm dying to self and I want to be a part of your creation. It's one of the reasons why we talk about baptism so often. The beauty behind it is laying down self and we're going up, we're coming up a new creation in Christ. I'm saying it's no longer about me, but God, it's all about you. It's all about you. Uh, 1 John 5, 13 through 15, John says this. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may, uh, or, uh, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. Do you know what he's saying here? When I start praying, my prayers begin to look more like Christ. I'm praying for things of the kingdom, not for Kevin's kingdom. There's a story of a gentleman, man, he was not happy. He wasn't happy with, with how things had kind of started going. He had, he had gotten married for a while. He's got three or four kids, and before long, he just kind of got out of the habit of being healthy. Uh, and he started noticing, hey, listen, I have a couple pounds here I'd like to shed. How do I get here? And, and he was pointed towards uh, uh, some kind of trainer, like a personal trainer. And the personal trainer took him in and met with him, talked about kind of a healthy diet. And he said, listen, here's where you are. And he drew, got a full length mirror, and he drew an image of an outline that he, he says, you can be here. Like, this is where I want you to be. 
And so the guy kind of laughed at that. Listen, I don't know if I can get there, right? The, the, the guy that was the personal trainer, he said, listen, you can do this. How, how are you going to do this? He, he, he says, you're going to do this through diet, and you're going to do this by consistently showing up and putting in the work at the gym. You know, before long, you know what you begin to discover? Months pass, and he started shedding some of this weight. Why? Because he started eating healthy, and on top of that, he started consistently showing up and putting in work at the gym. And it wasn't long. It was about a year and a half later, and all of a sudden, he was looking in this mirror, and he saw that his image fit in there. Let's bring this to Christ. You think about Christ. We think about our lives when we came to him versus now. Do I look like I am the image of Christ? Can I just, man, like, let's just throw this out here. I don't know about you guys when you came to know the Lord, but before I knew him, I had lots of questions and I was desperate. Man, I kept reaching for all types of things. What what if prayer is shaping you to be more like Christ so that your neighbor can see Christ in you. What if that right there is what's going to bring somebody, not just through the doors of this church, but to have their lives transformed by Jesus? Man, and I'm just telling us this. That's possible. That's possible. It is. I I, want to make sure I close right here. Today... No matter where you are, I want you to hear this. Because maybe some of you feel like you're just failing desperately. Let me tell you this. You're one prayer away from correcting things, right? right? You are one step away from moving in any direction towards Jesus. Listen, it's simple. Yeah, it, Just a simple invitation. Lord, change my heart. Lord, I surrender my life for some of us that have never done that. For some of us, it's Lord, change my ways. Lord, seek, look inside my heart. See if there's any wicked way in me and change it. Lord, how about this? You are mighty. You are powerful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How about this? For some of us, your will, not my will, Jesus. Let's go to the Lord. Father, I love you. God, I am so grateful. Amen. Let's stand as we close in song today. You are 
are my life and my treasure The one that I can't live without Here at your feet my desires and dreams I lay down our prayer for you this week is that you'll give it all to God. He wants it. He's waiting to take it. We're the ones holding on to it. Give it to him. Allow him to become so much more in your life. That's our prayer for you this week. As you leave today, stop by the welcome desk. There's a lot of great things going on. You can find out more information about all that's happening there at the welcome desk. Thank you for coming today. We're so glad you joined us. We hope you'll join us again next week. We're dismissed.